line up I say we're doing this um, reading it from Ephesians 4 and I've got a, a little video where I thought rather than me read it I get uh, something nice to, to read it and it's about about being um, one body and uh, that's important though, although we're all different we've all got different uh, different jobs to do it's only very short one body Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 Live a life worthy of what God chose you for. Don't be proud, be completely gentle, be patient, and love one another. The Holy Spirit makes you one in every way, so try your best to remain as one. There is one body and one spirit, there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is one God and Father of all. The church is like a body. Christ is the head of the body. He makes the whole body grow and build itself up in love. Under Christ, every part of the body does its work. It supports the other parts. In that way, the body is joined and held together. Okay, that's it. So I would like just to say a, a very quick prayer um, and then uh, we're going to uh, move on. So, yeah, just thank you, Jesus. You are the head of this body. Thank you, Jesus. That, um, you made us and thank you that you're here now and you've got a plan for us and you want the best for us. So we just uh, want to keep our focus on you at the centre of all these things. Enjoy all the uh, things we can do because of your grace, but keep you at the centre. And so uh, the next, next little video is, again, this is some activities at the back for anybody who gets... One body, and, Ephesians chapter and, 4, verses and 1 so to 6 and 15. I'm going to describe a couple of those but for, for later on. With a life worthy of what God chose you for. And and Don't various. be proud, be completely be gentle, the humble one. be patient, and love one another. So basically we're going the Holy to, Spirit uh, makes you one in every um, way. If people want to. So try your best to remain. Those five characteristics that uh, we should be like if we're going to be like Jesus. And um, you can cut it out if you want to or leave it and, or cut it out and stick it on your fridge to remind you every day to proactively um, to be like this. Um, Colour sticking and all sorts of things. Then there are some other pictures at the back as well uh, from Ephesians 4 themes and uh, people can can get involved with that you did have this early <laughs> so yeah i'm not gonna have to do my it's it's amazing grace again <laughs> well or later on we can practice because we're going to do the play, play, real real Oh no, it's okay. Great, 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 great. If you can see the skill, the skill. Yeah. So you can either do the hand. Do it again, Sarah. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, our God is a great big God. Oh, 
Sometimes it's good. Planning, planning is not a good thing, is it? Sometimes <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. No, what we do is we um we'll pay for the offering and then we'll talk a little bit about teamwork. I've, I've been given five minutes, have I? Right. Okay. <laughs> Father Lord, we thank you so so much. Thank you for life. Thank you for the blessing that we've been having so far in this in this wonderful service, the children and, and the people, Lord. So we thank you. We thank you for the giving. We thank you for the money that has been given here, may be used for your glory. And also those who've been given in other ways, you know, you know, credit cards, debit cards, however you're giving, you know, it's for the glory of God and it's for his kingdom. So we thank you so much for that. And we pray that it will be used for your kingdom and the building of your kingdom. So we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Yeah, I got a, a, a little text during the week, I think. Yeah, and was, I was asked to spend about five minutes talking about teamwork. So when um, the family were doing different things, so I, I couldn't get, really get them together to, 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 to bring them together to, to put on a little display or a presentation for you. So I had to, I had to think about what I was going to say. So I spent this week thinking about um, teamwork and what teamwork means to me and means to us as a family. And one of the things that came to me was um, unique. The word unique came to me. Unique, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing word. If you think about, and I went on a Google this morning, I put it in, it was 7.72 billion of us on the planet. And that was a reading from, um, that was a statistic from the year 2020, 7.72 billion of us on this planet and every single one of us are completely different our dna is completely different and that was an amazing it's an amazing thing to think just a few of us in this room today our dna is completely completely different and that's an amazing thing that's how good good god is and that's you know that's um you know that's, that's, that's just an amazing thing so one of the things that I thought I would share, and I know I know that I, I have, well, I'm looking at much well. One thing I thought I'd share is um, just a simple thing that maybe we'd all understand. Washing up. <laughs> Washing up. Right, raise your hands if you dishwashers. If you've got a dishwasher in your house, raise your hand. Oh, thank you very much. Hands down, thank you. Good. Mm. When we first moved into our house, we had a dishwasher. We took it out and we threw it away. We said, we don't want a dishwasher. What's a dishwasher? Oh, so we threw the dishwasher away. Right. We didn't have any children at the time. No children <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, Andrew used to do a little washing up. I used to do my little washing up. No problems whatsoever. Now we have three children. First thing we did, we put up a rotor, right? Zachary would do it that day. Joshua would do it this week, this year. And it was, it was, it was amazing, it was amazing. We had a lovely rotor. And then what happened? Ah, right, Joshua was doing his washing up and then Zachary would come over with his, um, his cup or something while Joshua didn't wash up, slip another plate in, yeah? And then he would get upset. So what I'm saying to you at the end of the day, I'm gonna cut a long story short is that team is very difficult sometimes to build teams. We have rotors, we have things that we, you know, the things that we do at home, that causes arguments, and a lot of dis, you know, it, it, it just breaks, it can, break, it can break, break people up and break times up. So what I decided to do is I said, okay, right, no more rotors. So I tore up the rotor, threw it away. Yeah. And I said, I will decide on who does the washing up. <laughs> So that's the situation we've got at the moment. I decide, because I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that one day the, the children would turn around and say, oh, oh, I'll do it. We need the plates. We need to, the plates to be clean for the next meal. So, you know, one day they might turn around and say, well, I'll wash it off. I'll do the work. So I, I make the decisions at the end of the day. I say, well, Joshua, would you do that? And he would say, yes. Zachary, would you wash up? And he said, then we don't have a problem when I ask them to do the work for me. Yeah? So I think that, I think I've made the point about how sometimes we do, we're all different. 
And sometimes we have to come together and try to do something which is of this, you know, we have, well, it's just, the cause is the same. I mean, the plates need to be clean and we need to clean. Okay. So I thought I'd just share that with you. But by the way, if you do have any solutions to, to, to dishwashing, <laughs> or, yeah? because remember, some of us are on our own and we don't, you know, we don't have that issue, but with families, you know, dishwashing is, it can be a huge, huge problem. And I just like to, in terms of the body of Christ, I just like to I really take this opportunity to thank the church and to thank people who have made offerings for us. And um, I, I, I have Peter, uh, Peter and um, Linda, thank you for the Dartmouth trip. The Dartmouth trip was amazing. We went on a Dartmouth, Dartmouth trip. It's amazing. No Wi-Fi. Can you imagine life without no Wi-Fi? And um, also another memory that came to me was when Sue and Nigel um, asked us to come to their house. And we, we shared a meal together. Not only that we shared a meal together, but we had some lovely games at the end of the, at the, end of the meal. And, we, you know, we were doing things away from the good old mobile phones, and we weren't distracted from the mobile phones. So uniqueness, teamwork, thank you. To God be the glory, to God be the glory. I think I'm gonna get a surprise now, I don't know what this next one is, but it's a, it's a video called um, One Body. So is, is Regina, you know, is it, ac is it actions, no, actions, no. Oh, I'll have a sit down. I'm slightly disappointed. <laughs> I should have checked. Um, yeah, if you can get up my uh, my PowerPoint, I'll, I'll just read again the just from Ephesians. So I'm going to read the last two verses again. There's just such a wonderful calling. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> well, I'm going to say um, in Ephesians, so as you see from that, that's the um, one number eight in Ephesians 4, so we can skip on. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going to be quite quick. Um, and I, I reminded you of, of the... Um, these three verbs that keep coming up sitting walking and standing and we've done in the first few chapters in particular that resting being at peace in christ and knowing that that peace and that rest and then from that position we can get up and do stuff and um, so we can walk with him and he, he walks with us and so that's uh, the bit that we're going to talk about today he's beginning having explained all that christ has done um, from before the beginning, before we were even created, he made us, chose us, saved us, um, has got plans for us, has given us his spirit, enabled us to explain what the, the whole vision is and the whole calling on our lives is, we, which we talked about last time, the church being a display of his glory. These are incredible callings. And now we have to get up and do it, do the business, not just be hearers. But do us. So we're in the walking bit, and then in a, in a little while we'll get on to the standing and fighting bit with the battles. So we'll skip on to the, the next one. So there's just a brief um, summary of, of things that, um, that that we did. We we looked last time in. I do love chapter two because of the the way he explains how everything has been made one. Everything was all divided, separate people, separate nations, separate. But in Christ, on the cross, everything has been put right and we're all one. We're, we're not, um, we don't have to think of ourselves in different colours, different nations, different languages, different backgrounds. We're all one in, in Christ. So there can be a unity. He has won that for us. So we actually have it. But we have to work it out. And that's what I'm going to be looking at a bit more today. Um, so skipping on to the next one. So there were three particular things that I, I saw in, in these, these verses. And the first one is, is where it says, walk worthy. Um, so living a life worthy of God's calling. And, and I was thinking about that a little bit. So I'm going to talk about that. And then maintaining this unity that is already one for us, which I, I just mentioned. And then the fact is that we are called... Um, you know, by his grace, 
you know, he's not just saved us and sat us down and said, you're all right now, you're saved, but actually to serve one another, to serve the world by bringing his light and his truth into it. So we'll move along again. And we've got the first thing, which is going to walk worthy of his calling. And I wrote down there, because it's, it's been in the news a lot recently, and I'm not going to dwell on it, but you hear of policemen and raping people, you hear of doctors, a surgeon who's assaulting patients, you hear of a teacher who was you know, sleeping with pupils and, and all this sort of stuff. And actually, those actions are not worthy of the office that they're called to. And we have an office that we're called to. We're, we're, um, you know, we're called to display his glory. We're called to be his hands and feet. We're called to be his presence. We're called to be his ambassadors. We're called to be all sorts of things. And uh, it reminds me, I mean, when I was at school <laughs> in the bad old days, <laughs> I went to a grammar school up near Birmingham and we had this hideous uniform, bright colors, red, yellow cap you had to wear with whatever and, and blazers and, and all sorts of things. And you had to go to school and back home on it. And I came from the back streets. And so I was ashamed to wear this uniform. So I had this massive army overcoat that when I came at my house, I was wearing the army overcoat. And I'd get on the bus and I had to go a couple of miles to the school. And then of course, when I get off the bus, I'd take the army coat off and I can walk in my uniform. Because if, if I'm seen walking up to school not in my uniform, I will be in trouble. And if it was interesting, if I did something wrong, if I got into a hoo-ha in the street, um, going to school or coming home from school, I would be hauled up and severely punished because people could see from my uniform where I was from and who I was representing. They would see the school. And if they went to the school, I, you, I could say, well, what's that got to do with the school? I'm in my own time. I mean, but I was wearing this uniform and, and I brought dishonor on the school by my, my, my behavior if I had to do things wrong. But what I'm saying is, Paul is saying that you have got a calling, an amazing calling, an eternal calling to be heirs of his promises, to, to represent him, to bring him to all sorts of people. For goodness sake, walk in a way that is worthy of that. Don't do all sorts of stupid things. That's why we look, we've had some of these, um, you know, be humble and gentle and patient and peaceful and loving. Be all of these things because that reminds us of uh, what we're what we're what we're called to do so um it's not uh you've got to earn it we've we've given our salvation by grace we're saved by grace we don't have to earn it but actually when you know the grace of god you know that favor then it's right to respond to it to be amazed um so uh, that's what that one is so skip on to the the, the second one So the second one then is this um, unity that I was talking about. But I've written down there the two things. There's a reality which actually um, sovereignly, you know, God has um, given us um, this sense of unity. There is, it's amazing to think, the more you think about that one body, one spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one hope, one faith, one God, there's all these one things. There is only one true God. There is only one way of being saved from our sin, and that is through him. Um, there is one Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit that all believers have. I know when you look at the world, and I'm not going to go into today, you see all these different branches of Methodists and Baptists and Pentecostals and whatever it is. We, it's easy in the modern world to be stressing all the time the difference that, you know, though these leak about a bit more than them. And these are, but actually, you know, there is uh, one God, there is one true word, there, there is one Holy Spirit in us. And, you know, we need to, and I've, I've always tried to, I, I think I have always tried to do that, that, uh, well, probably a, a few months after I was saved, I mean, I wasn't saved until I was about 30, half of my life I, I was not a, a Christian, I knew about Christianity, but I wasn't born again and I wasn't a Christian. And when I, I was first saved, I was saved into a, a real, what's called a charismatic Pentecostal type church, real light, and I loved it, I, I still do. 
Um, and I have to be honest and say that, you know, for a few months, I think I was a bit full of, oh, this is the way to do, and all those dead churches over there, all this, that, and the other. But actually, God, pretty quickly, the Holy Spirit quickly jumped on me and said, I'm not having that, you know. And um, we're all brothers and sisters. We all have the same God. We're all going the same way, going to spend eternity in the same place. And so I'm not having that. And then I quickly, from the church that I was part, I quickly became part of the local fraternal of churches. And I enjoyed meeting up. And we were all very different. And we all did things in, in lots of different ways. But we shared the one love for God, the one love for Jesus, the one Holy Spirit that was at work in us. And so, yeah, we had to, you know, you have to make decisions and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, we, we have this reality that on the cross, the deal was done. We were made right. We were now all part of the same family, not two separate or a million separate, same family. Uh, but actually, we have to maintain that. So, and that's the process that we're in at the moment where we, you know, we have to, we have to maintain that. Um, and it's all the work of the Holy Spirit. It's all God's grace through his Holy Spirit. So he frees us from the things that the flesh and the world and the devil would try to breathe in us and, and propagate in us pride, prejudice, selfishness. It's all about me and what those people over there do it differently. Oh, they, they have smells and bells and, and what's all that about? Or, no, if, if they love the same God, love the same Jesus, and the same spirit is at work in them, then I'm going to forbear. I'm going to be a bit patient. Now, obviously, I, I, I will have written somewhere else. I think, you know, it's not an, it's a meaning. We've got to be wishy-washy and pretend, you know, we have to stand up for truths that we believe in. But actually, we, um, we can forbear a little bit and not, and not just try and pick holes all the time. So it frees us from those things. It teaches us about the truth of God. And we develop a love for each other. And not just here, but each other across this community, across Hertfordshire, across the nation, across the nations. So we pray for the church in Afghanistan. We, we pray for Regina's work on spreading the word into African countries, into uh, we support families who are working in the Middle East and, and we care about them and we care uh, what happens. So um, there's, a, there's a real sense of, you know, through the Spirit and it's, it's all the grace of God and it's all his Spirit at work in us um, that we can, those things can begin to grow and develop. Okay, so the third one. And then the, the, the last one is, um, it, it says at the end, that, oh, well, not at the end, actually, it says in, actually, I will just read the, the verse, verse 11 and 12. It was he who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach maturity in the faith. So it's to prepare God's people. And that's why, you know, some people will think, oh, goodness, when Steve left, we might have a year or two without Steve, without a minister. But actually, I'm not belittling, I love Steve and, and all the rest of it. But actually, we are the body of Christ. We are, we are still dozens of people called to be here, equipped by God, working by his spirit, standing on his word, doing these things. And it's for people to be doing that, each one playing their part. So I encourage you, you know, don't wait for somebody else to do it. Oh, they seem to be the talented people. Let them get on with it. They, they're doing this. Now, we've all got different things. I'm not in the least bit musical, so I can never have... <laughs> I love worship, but I, I can't be, ever be anything to do with the, the music because I, I don't have those skills or that calling. But I respect people who do, and then we can all respect, but all be seeking God to say, um, what is it that, you know, that you've made me like? What is it that you've, you want me to do? Um, so we can we can prepare for works of service until we all oh, is an amazing thing and so we, we know that we haven't got there yet so I've not made it because actually we've got to attain maturity attain to the fullness of Christ <laughs> now that won't happen until it comes again until we're all in in glory so these things this working together um, and and the grace 
is for each of us individually to do the things that we're individually called to, but it's also corporately so we, we can do things together. So I, I've written there the, the bottom half. It's, it's a supernatural thing. God at work in us, I, I've, I think I've said before, I don't really like the phrase, I'm only human. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'm only human. Because actually, we're not. I mean, we are human, and we're definitely human. That means we have a weakness. But actually, we're superhuman in some ways because God's spirit is at work in us. Um, and I sense sort of prophetically, why I've written at the, at the bottom there, about the interrelationships and interpersonal element that I think that is so important. And I think God is highlighting um, these things um, at, the, you know, at the moment for us as a church. So I would encourage you, and I encourage people out there, you know, don't be loners. Don't, yeah, yeah, you, you, could, you could say, oh, I love the Lord and I'm all right at home. And I don't want to get involved. I'll let somebody else do that. But actually meet together. Think about the church in the early days and, and, and certainly like the church that I was saved into. We shared lives, not in the sense that we were all over each other in the wrong sort of way, but we met during the week. If anybody had a problem, they would phone and, and get involved. We were in small prayer groups. We went to house groups. We did stuff together, all sorts of different ways, but there was all sorts of things happening. But we were in relationships in that sense, discipleship type things, encouraging one another. And that's happening more and more now. I'm, you know, I'm thrilled you know, to see all the, the different little prayer groups that are springing up and the different support groups and, and the different um, ways in which we do things. But I would encourage you, I think that's something that I think God is, is, is saying to us, that the, the interrelationship and the interpersonal stuff is important. And, and I know that's important for me because I have this funny thing that actually I'm, I'm by nature an introvert. I'm actually quite happy in my own company and I can quite happily drift along and I, I thank God that he got me into sport and that I, I love sport because growing up that was the thing that really helped me because I was always part of teams playing football team cricket team tennis team whatever it was team and and doing stuff and that, that made me and it, it's where I got all, I found all my friends uh, and and so I was much more sociable I think without that I would have been quite a, <laughs> quite a loner um, so I think that's that's a good thing. Um, but get involved in, in stuff, I would say, in whatever you can do. You know, prayerfully and, and see, well, what's God calling you to? Um, right, so the last one then is the therefore. I always try and put a therefore at the end. If you've, if you've looked at stuff and, um, and you're, you're thinking it over, then there's, there's a reason why God is saying, you know, we need to be doers of and not just hearers. So I said the first thing uh, on that when it comes up is that character and actions matter. The thing I started with, walk worthy of the calling. You're a Christian now, you've got that tag on you and I'm not ashamed of it, I'm proud of it. Um, but um, my character counts and then out of my character, my actions will come and that counts because people will see that and uh, and they will judge and, uh, and see Christ or, or the church um, in a way because of the way that I act. And a, a word that came to me, so I'm, I'm going to stress this word, um, I think when I was preparing this, is lowliness. There's one of the translations of, you know, where, where we get in, in this translation that, that I've been reading, be humble and gentle. Um, sometimes that they use the word meek and, and people are not quite sure of that. And some, some use the word lowly. And I, I just think John Piper does a, a lovely thing and, 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 and it says, um, think of yourself as lowly, but think of Christ highly. Uh, so again, it doesn't mean you're a doormat. It doesn't mean that you cave in on things and everybody walks all over you, but actually, the grace of God that's worked in you, that's making you into person that it's like, he's, he's not putting yourself, I've got to get my way. I want this, I think this, and so everybody has got to come into line with me. That it's actually quite a good thing to have a lowly view of yourself, which exalts the grace of God, 
because actually it has made you and me amazing. So I'm not trying to put anybody down. You're all amazing. It is, it's believers, you all have Christ in you. You all have his spirit. You all have everything you need to lead a godly life. You're going to be with him forever. You're going to be heirs of every promise with him in eternity. These are amazing things. But actually, in working it out, I'm not strutting around, saying, look at me, actually, it's all the grace of God. So it always gives me just that lowly sort of edge. Um, develop godly thinking. And so, you know, we've said often that you don't get these, this character and you don't, you don't get these act without working through it. Um, so that's where we, we daily look into this. You know, we daily meet together and encourage each other in what are we being, that's what I'm talking about now, what are we being called to be like? Um, and we're reminding ourselves because the world crowds in. <laughs> We've already talked about you know, social media and Twitter, and you can't escape bombardments of pictures and images and thoughts and views and, and all that. You're bombarded, and it will shape you. Just like I was shaped growing up as a child by the world around me. Now I try to be shaped, you know, by God's word uh, rather than by everything that I'm being bombarded with. So character and actions matter. Um, seek spiritual gifts is my second one. Uh, and, and a variety of opportunities. I'm assuming they can't, can't get this one. It doesn't matter. But can't get this last. No, the, um, the, the therefore application. Oh, sorry. On, on the one one, I'm looking on the back. It's not there. Sorry. Thanks for telling me. It's not on the back, and I'm looking, thinking it's not there. Okay, seek spiritual gifts and a variety of opportunities uh, to use them. And as, as I encourage you, meet together in different different things, doing different different things. It doesn't matter what it is. I know like Linda and Shirley and various people were up here on Wednesday cleaning the carpets, and haven't they done a wonderful job? So big thank you to, to them. But um, they haven't done it for that reason, but they, they, they've been doing it. So get together and do different things in different ways. And then the last one, I put, obey the promptings of the spirit. You know, we do want to, this is all about God's spirit in us. And it's all about being led by him and not by the world and by our feelings and by everything else, but being led by, by him. And use the gifts. This scripture has got a lot of talk about the gifts that he's given both to us individually and everyone has gifts of their own but then also gifts that he's given to the church, you know, the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists and, and the apostolic people, things like that. So there's, there's lots and lots of that. So I would just encourage you, we're going we're gonna to sing, we're going to finish with singing a song, one of my songs that's just been, it's an old song, Shine Jesus Shine. Um, but it's just been coming to me recently quite a lot. Um, where, where we sing in the chorus, shine, Jesus, shine, blaze, spirit, blaze, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. And there's all of this shining and burning and uh, blazing and flowing. There's all of this where the goodness and the grace of God is going out from us to all sorts of places. And, uh, and that's the grace of God. So we're going to close with singing that and then I'll just close in prayer after. Jesus thank you for your great love for us thank you for your great grace towards us and so we, we do pray shine in our hearts or blaze set us set our hearts on fire as we as we ponder your grace and uh, we just pray that you will bless us Bless all that we do in your name and bless this community through us. Amen.